combustion, engine ignition, and liftoff. Less than 20 people in history have launched from Earth into orbit on board three different spacecraft. Mike Fink will be the next to join that club as the pilot of the SpaceX Crew-11 mission to the International Space Station. Like many current and former astronauts, Fink was inspired by the 1969 moon landing as a child and the Apollo-Soyuz mission that followed in 1975. His first moves towards the stars came during his teenage years. I knew what I wanted, but I didn't know how to get there, and there's, I didn't know what engineering really was. So I went to an engineering school and found out that I really liked it, and, uh, and I was able to, to, to study aeronautics and astronautics, you know, space and air, and then I got, to, I got my private pilot's license, and I studied astronomy, got a, a degree in planetary geology kind of stuff, and so I'm, I'm, I, I was definitely paying attention in, at the college age to say, how do I I know where I want to go, I got, and I know I have the skills, I have confidence, how do I get there? So I started looking at what other people did, how did they become astronauts? And uh, that's why on my Wikipedia page, uh, I'm hoping it tells my story pretty well so that anybody in the future could at least use my example as whether it's good or bad to become, you know, to reach their dreams too. And that's part of what our job as astronauts is to inspire the next generation. And I do my best. Part of doing his best led Fink to pick up a few linguistic skills during his time as a student at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, which included Russian and Japanese. It was a, st a strategic move when I was uh, a much younger person in college uh, uh, at MIT. You have to study a foreign language. So I said, well, I want to be an astronaut. So what country has a space program? Soviet Union, they mostly speak Russian, so I'll study Russian. And then when I was on my first assignment uh, from uh, in the Air Force, uh, I, I was bored. Uh, so I took night classes in geology and another language, Japanese. And then the Air Force caught me speaking Japanese, so they sent me over, and then I really got immersed. Fink served in the U.S. Air Force from 1990 until August of 2011, just after the STS-134 flight. Just before joining the Air Force, Fink spent a summer in the former Soviet Union at the Moscow Aviation Institute, where he studied cosmonautics. If you can just imagine what the 1980s were like, um, in 1986 on the front page of National Geographic it's like the you know the Soviets are are they ahead in space and and it's like well maybe and I, it was and then having a chance to be some of the first Americans to go over as an exchange student and and see how they did things and and really appreciate the language and the culture and and the way that the Soviets now Russians approach things was really eye-opening and I think that uh, really um, when I talked about that story uh, in my astronaut interview, they said, yeah, we're building a space station together. Maybe this guy can help. And I think I've helped. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say so. Fink was selected to the astronaut office in 1996 and played a key role in helping to progress human spaceflight. He was a backup crew member for four Soyuz flights and flew to the space station twice on a Soyuz spacecraft once in 2004 as part of Expedition 9, and then again as the commander of Expedition 18. And lift off for the final launch of Endeavour. His most recent trip to space happened to be STS-134 in 2011, the 25th and final flight of the orbiter named Endeavour. Since then, his focus has been keenly on NASA's commercial crew program, the successor for human spaceflight following the end of the shuttle era. Fink was the astronaut office chief of the commercial crew branch when the agency selected Boeing and SpaceX to mature their respective spacecraft under the commercial crew transportation capability contracts in 2014. Five years later, Fink was named to the crew of the Boeing Starliner crew flight test. Fink replaced Eric Bowe, who departed due to medical reasons. He joined the crew alongside Boeing astronaut Chris Ferguson and NASA astronaut Nicole Mann. You can see the full evolution of the CFT mission and the early Starliner 1 mission crews in the video above. But to make a long story shorter, if we fast forward to 2022, Fink was named as the backup pilot for CFT. Then in September of 2022, Fink was named as the pilot of the Starliner 1 mission alongside Scott Tingle, who was named as the mission's commander. The two were officially joined by Canadian Space Agency astronaut Joshua Kutrick the following year. JAXA astronaut Kimia Yui also joined the mix at some point, though he was never formally announced by NASA as being part of the crew. But that wasn't actually the first time that Yui and Fink crossed paths. 
when Kimiya-san uh, and Tak became astronauts, I called down from, I think I was in space, and I called down and congratulated them or sent them a message. And that was, uh, and that was, a, that was a start. But I really didn't know him too well until, uh, until he joined us with uh, Starliner One. And, uh, and it turns out um, my last assignment before I became an astronaut, I was doing flight testing in Japan with a new Japanese airplane called the F-2, XF-2 at the time. And he ended up flying it. And we know a lot of the same people. Uh, it's a small world, right? And right. It's a small flight test world especially. So, uh, so we had that, that common background together. He puts up with my Japanese and teaches me a new word now and then, and it, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Um, he also has a great sense of humor, which you, know, you, you, you can't tell by looking at him, but today we, it came out, on the, it came out uh, and it was, it, was a, it was a lot of fun. So yeah, so Kimiya-san and I, we brought that relationship from being on Starliner 1 and that closeness together. Uh, when he left Starliner 1 uh, to go to Dragon, we all felt bad, and then I, joined, I went in to join him, and, and I think he was honestly as happy as I was that uh, you know, a new, the same you know, friend came to, to join the crew. The Starliner turned Dragon duo are joined by Crew 11 Commander Zina Cardman and Mission Specialist Oleg Platonov. Both of them will be flying to space for the first time. That's why I think this is a great crew. There's such a good mix and, and, and Oleg and Zina both bring such uh, great excitement and professionalism, they are really, really good at what they do. The only thing they're missing is experience in space, and that's about to happen. Uh, and that's what Kimiya-san and I could bring in uh, to share with them. So uh, rather than to, to, to come in as like, uh, I know everything, you don't know anything, we just, Kimiya-san and I both just tell stories. Hey, when I was on my mission, we did this, or we had a problem like this, and we, we handled it this way. That didn't work, so we handled it a better way, and that works. So that way they can gain from our experience and perhaps our mistakes. I don't think Kimiya-san's ever made a mistake. He's so good. But <laughs> But uh, for, for me, a way to, to how to best work with NASA and our ground control teams and our flight control teams, um, I think I've learned a few things along the way. And, uh, and uh, Zena and Oleg have you know, been very careful to listen and, and internalize it. And we'll see uh, how that all works out. But it just bodes well for a good mission because we wake up every morning wanting to do a good job. After more than a decade of working towards his return to the space station, Fink says he can't wait to be back in microgravity once again. I don't know the, the right words for it, but there's a special feeling you have when you know that you're at the right place at the right time. Um, that you're just where you're supposed to be, where maybe you think that's where God, God invented you or made you for, or you just, you, just feel, you just feel right. And when I'm up in space, that's, I feel like I was really supposed to, be, I'm supposed to be there. And so I waited for these last 14 years to get a chance to go again. Uh, we have a great crew. We're looking forward to a really great mission. And uh, I think I'm going to have that feeling every day. Reporting from the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Will Robinson-Smith for Space Flight Now.